everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marie, I'm a graphic designer and I use Adobe Illustrator to create illustrations, 3D simulations, and branding. In today's tutorial, we have a request from uh, this person that sent me a message on Instagram asking me to recreate the shape of this uh, gel polish. So let's paste this picture on a layer. I'm going to lower the opacity. I'm gonna lock the layer, create a new layer that I'm gonna be drawing on. So I'm gonna use the pen tool to draw uh, the front shape. In this case, I'm just gonna draw half and then reflect the other half. And um, you can adjust it. Okay, and then I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create a half of the lid here as well. I'm going to be using two different kinds of 3D effects for the lid and for the bottom. So for the bottom, which I'm going to call the body, I'm going to select uh, this shape and I'm going to make a reflected copy using the reflect tool and then drag it over and select both shapes and then go to Pathfinder. Wait, no, this is too small. Okay, select both shapes, go to Pathfinder, Unite. So, so now this is one shape and we're going to go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel for the body here. I'm going to click Preview, select Preview, and we're going to add a bevel. Uh, we just need to find the right one that is going to recreate the shape of this gel polish uh, as similar as possible. So we play around with the uh, position, the bevel. I'm going to add the right extrude depth. And I always add a little bit of perspective. In this case, I added 20 degrees. In here, where it says, um, where it has these points, uh, you can uh, higher them or lower them based on how you want the uh, bevel effect to be visible. Also, there's those two icons uh, that you can, uh, these two where you can choose if you want the bevel effect to go outwards or inwards on this shape. I'm gonna select the outwards. Okay, this looks uh, similar enough to me. So for now, I'm gonna select okay. Now for the lid, we're gonna use 3D Revolve. So it's always a 3D effect, it's slightly different. So we just need half of the lid and then it's going to revolve around itself and create this circular shape. I'm going to add the same perspective, which is 20. I'm going to um, position it so that it matches the bottom underneath. Once you've added a 3D effect to an object, if you want to make modifications to this 3D effect, you go to the appearance panel here and double click on the 3D uh, effect and it will reopen the panel where you can make modifications. Now, always through the, th uh, the appearance panel while my object, which in this case is the lid, is selected, I'm going to change the fill color. I'm going to uh, search for a pink that is similar to the pink in the photo. Then I'm going to apply the same pink to the uh, bottom shape here, always through the appearance panel. So you select the shape, go to the appearance panel, click on fill, and you can change the color. Now I'm going to fix the lighting a little bit. So while the body is still selected through the appearance panel, I'm going to double click on the 3D effect to open the panel, select more options, and here I can play around with the lights. I added a second light here on this uh, sphere, and you just select it and move it around and change the settings um, 
on based on how you want the lighting to look. So now I'm just going to play around with the settings until I get this a design as similar as possible to the photo. So I'll fix the lights on the lid as well, just like we did for the bottom part. And um, as I said, you can change the fill color. There is no stroke color to these shapes, um, always through the appearance panel. So even for the lid here, I added a second light. And if you want, you can also uh, modify the shape as well, even though you already added the 3D effect. See, so I slightly rounded the angle on the lid, the top and the bottom angles. So I did make a mistake. I was working with a photo that had the opacity, a uh, low op opacity applied to it. So now I took off the opacity of, uh, on the photo and I am changing the pink that I had applied to my two objects to a darker pink that will uh, be similar to the photo. I'm also going to fix the lighting again here, okay. And once we've got the color and the lighting and the position the way we want them, we are pretty much done. Because after that, all I have to apply is the writing and maybe a little bit of shadow where needed. Okay, so once we are done here, press OK. Then I'm going to select uh, the ellipse tool, change the fill to black, stroke to none, create an ellipse, and I'm just going to put it behind the lid and above the body. And while it's selected, I'm going to blur it, change the blending mode to multiply, and lower the opacity a little bit. Then I'm going to create a second ellipse, always with a black stroke. I'm going to add a blur effect to it. And I'm going to put the second ellipse underneath the body here on the bottom. I'm going to change um, the fill to a gradient. So from a black gradient to a zero opacity gradient. So it has kind of a shading to it. So now that that's done, I'm just going to add the text here. I'm going to use this uh, Century Gothic that seems pretty similar to the font that was used here. So I'm just going to replicate the text. I'm going to momentarily put the text here on the photo just so we have, we can position them at the right distance. One another, I'm going to find using the pen tool. And then I'm going to put this one with a Time New Roman. All right, I'm going to align everything to center and bring it over to my simulation here. Let me refix this at bottom uh, ellipse shape. And here is our 3D simulation created with Adobe Illustrator. A shout out uh, to Christina that requested this tutorial. I hope this is what you were looking for. If it's not, please let me know. And if it is, please let me know anyways. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for following my Facebook page, for uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy my tutorials. If you have any requests, just uh, send me a message or drop a comment. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook. Bye-bye.